Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we are doing a comparison between the 6800 XT and new 7900 XTX. It seems quite a few people are juggling between spending the extra money and grabbing a 7900 XTX or sticking with the cheaper, well performing last gen 6800 XT. So I am hoping that today's video ends up helping some of you make that choice. Getting right into our test system specs, we are using the AMD 5800X 3D with 32GB of 3000MHz CL15 RAM inside of the very nice O11 Dynamic EVO. That all being said guys, let's not waste time and get right into the benchmarks. Starting with God of War at 4K, both cards show great performance, with the 6800 XT averaging around the high 60s for FPS, where the 7900 XTX averages closer to the 100s, kind of blowing the 6800 XT out of the water. Switching over to Spider-Man Remastered to compare ray tracing performance at a lighter level than some other games, we started out with 4K very high settings with ray tracing enabled and the 7900 XCX averages a very respectable mid 60s to low 70s in FPS, where the 6800 XT struggled and couldn't manage a 60 FPS average, only getting around the 40s. Removing the ray tracing and comparing the two cards at 4K very high settings, the 6800 XT looks a lot better here, keeping high 60s, low 70s for the average, where the 7900 XCX puts up some pretty insane numbers averaging well over 120 FPS. At 1440p very high ray tracing, the two cards look strangely similar in performance, both occasionally hovering around the 80s for average FPS, although the 6800 XT dips into the lower 60s when it's busier while the 7900 XTX manages to stay in the lower 70s, but overall it's pretty impressive out of the 6800 XT. I just thought I would throw in a quick comment here as well and mention in one of Hardware and Box most recent videos they had about the same performance cap experience that I'm having in this game. They are also running a 5800X 3D system and they either suspect it's a CPU bottleneck or something working strangely in the game's engine. Either way for whatever reason these two cards at this setting perform basically the same for my tests. Lastly, we have 1440p very high with the ray tracing turned off, and both cards average well over 100 FPS, with the 7800 XCX keeping around the 160s and the 6800 XT around the 120s. We do see the 6800 XT have larger dips down into the 80s on occasion, but on the 7900 XCX end, I am still experiencing the strange pause and loading in of assets when swinging around. You know, I would say both cards are pretty overkill at this resolution, so you would be happy either way you went. But for the 7900 XCX, I would recommend capping the FPS at 144, as when I did that, it seemed to help with the asset loading in. Changing over to a heavily AMD favorite title, I decided to take a look at Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Starting with 4K badass quality, the 6800 XT averages a respectable 65 FPS, where the 7900 XCX beats it with a 77 FPS average. You know, not really the biggest win for the 7900 XCX here. Going down to 1440p badass quality settings, the 7900 XCX averages about 145 FPS, where the 6800 XT averages around 120 FPS, creating a larger gap between the two cards. And I suppose you could give the edge to the 7900 XCX if you're shooting for a 144Hz average. I do feel the added frames and FPS's like Borderlands helps make the game look better compared to other story driven titles so take with that as you will. Looking at another FPS we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Starting out at 4K with the settings maxed out, the 6800 XT manages to keep around a 70 FPS average, but the 7900 XCX completely destroys the 6800 XT here, averaging 117 FPS, an overwhelming win for the 7900 XTX. Going down to 1440p with the settings still maxed, 
the 7900XTX gets a staggering 193 FPS average, while the 6800XT lags pretty far behind with a 118 FPS average. Truly some major uplift going with the 7900XTX in this title. Well, here we go guys, it's time to destroy these cards with some Cyberpunk 2077 benchmarks. Starting with 4K medium ray tracing, the 7900XTX barely gets around a 30fps average, where the 6800XT puts up an abysmal 20fps average. Not a good showing from either of these cards. Switching to 4K Ultra settings, the 7900XTX averages just around 60fps, which is really awesome. But the 6800XT once again struggles and barely averages around the mid 30s for FPS. Pretty big win for the 7900XTX here. Going down to 1440p and medium ray tracing, the 6800XT once again can't put up anything playable together. Looking over at the 7900XTX, it gets really close to a 60fps average, but just can't quite reach it. Pretty sad ray trace performance for both cards in this particular title. Last test here in Cyberpunk, we are looking at 1440p Ultra. Both cards put up some excellent numbers with the 7900XTX averaging around 160fps, while the 6800XT loses out by quite a bit but still averaging a respectable 100fps. Switching to a racing title, I chose to take a look at Dirt Rally 2. At 4K max settings, both cards do great, but the 7900XTX takes a commanding lead, averaging over 170 FPS, where the 6800XT only averages around the 100 FPS mark. Next game to benchmark on our list is the classic Red Dead Redemption 2. Starting out at 4K with the max settings, the 6800XT averages a nice 67 FPS, where the 7900XTX slaughters it, averaging an impressive 96 FPS. Going down to 1440p max settings, the 7900XTX gets a very nice 136 FPS average, where the 6800XT averaged 102 FPS. Both cards doing quite well in this title, but you can really see the 7900XTX start to flex its muscles in straight rasterized performance. Alright, last game I wanted to take a look at was Elden Ring. At 4K max, the 7900XTX has no problem easily keeping at the 60fps average. But when looking at the 6800XT, it for the most part keeps at 60fps, but when things get busy, we once in a while get a small dip into the 50s. Overall, it's a bit more of a stuttery experience from the little bit of playtime I had between the two cards. Alright guys, and that's going to do it for the comparison today. Honestly, for the price the 6800XT is going for, it is a very respectable card when it comes to 1440p performance and even can pretty frequently push at least 4K 60fps. The 7900XTX is clearly better, but at the end of the day, it depends what titles you want to play. If you're a competitive Modern Warfare 2 player, the 7900XTX seems kind of like a no-brainer, but when it comes to a lot of the other titles, I think that at 4K being able to average 60 FPS is usually going to be reached by both of these cards. When looking at 1440p performance, unless you're really a stickler about getting 144Hz, I also think the 6800XT for the most part is going to give you an extremely high refresh rate experience anyways. And for what the 6800XT can be found for nowadays, I've seen listings for $540 on Newegg and Amazon, so when you're looking at those kinds of deals. I'd say 6800XT is an excellent buy, but if you aren't able to get those kinds of deals for that card, 7900XTX at $1000 really doesn't seem too bad. Hopefully this video today helps you guys to decide if the upgrade is truly worth the cost for you. Um, I just want to thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed the content today, please leave a like. If you have any you know, questions or opinions about the results that you saw today, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you've been watching a couple of videos of mine and you enjoy them, consider subscribing. Um, really helps out the channel. Once again, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all in another video.